While frame, size, and shape are very important, there is a much, much bigger takeaway in this lesson. And it's so important that I would encourage you to watch it through, set it aside for a day or two, and then watch it again. Between the website, YouTube videos, and our consumer's guide to buying eyeglasses, I get a lot of email. A lot of email. And you know what? I answer every last one of them. Well, at least the ones that are optically related. Every once in a while, I get one that presents me with the perfect teachable moment. And last week, I got this one. Hi, John. I saw your YouTube video on how frame selection affects lens thickness. I learned so much and loved the humor in it too. I had heard a few years ago that choosing a smaller frame is a good idea with my high minus prescription, but I didn't realize how important it is until I bought my most recent eyeglasses. I have a question that I hope you can help me with, but didn't want to post it on YouTube. The prescription for my left eye is minus 850, cylinder minus 0.75, axis 135, and my right eye is minus 650, cylinder minus 0.25, axis 15, with a narrow PD of 57. I went to four optical shops, and none were knowledgeable about frame selection for my prescription, and said that with high index 1.74 lenses, it's not really a concern. All of the eyeglasses I saw were the trendy oversized ones, and some average sized ones, which on my narrow face look oversized. The optician said, small glasses are out of style and urged me to get rectangular frames that were eye size 51, bridge size 14, although I asked her if I should order them in size 49 because I was concerned they were too big, and she said no, they would look too small, and that size is for a child. While I see fine out of them, I'm not happy with the cosmetic result. They are quite thick, even with Essilor 360 high index 1.74 lenses, and I think the facial inset and distortion is much more noticeable than with my previous frames. I look like I'm in a fishbowl or wearing safety goggles. So I decided to learn all I can to make a better selection and came across your video and some other articles that have been helpful. I've found some rounded frames online in sizes 43, 18 and 46, 16, which are very hard to find frames for my narrow PD. The 4616 frames are children's, and the 4318 frames are readers. My main goal is for the least amount of facial distortion, along with thinner lenses. My question is, I've seen conflicting info online about whether it's preferable to choose a round frame or an oval frame to lessen the facial distortion. Do you have a recommendation? Also, do you know of any other options for finding frames for a narrow PD? Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, whoosh. Uh, where do we even start here? First of all, after reading Lee Ann's email, I immediately knew that I could help her, which is what this video is all about. I'm going to walk you through exactly how we got some beautiful results for Lee Ann and made her a very happy customer. But first, let's step back for a minute and think about her experience prior to meeting us. Leanne does have a high minus prescription, but not overly so. Her prescription is not all that uncommon. Yet she visited four different opticians just trying to get a nice pair of glasses that she knew was possible because she had worn them before. And none of the opticians that she visited could help her. Each of them guided Lee Ann towards frames that didn't fit her face or match her prescription. Why? Well, probably because, you know, we all know from big optical marketing that 174 and freeform technology are magic solutions that will make any prescription beautiful and let your customers see the world in high definition glory. 
You don't even have to think anymore. <clears throat> Four different opticians all fed her this line of baloney. You know something else? Leanne lives in Florida, a state that requires education and a license to become an optician. Now, Leanne is not an optician, yet she was able to come up with a better solution for her eyewear needs than four licensed opticians could. What's the point here? The point is that, like Leanne, you have to care. You have to care enough not just to know how to do your job, but to ask questions and persist until you're satisfied with the answers. Look, you are watching this video so that I know you care. <laughs> Thank you. But just remember a license or a certification is not what makes you or anyone a good optician. Don't believe everything that you read in a magazine article or some CE sponsored by your big optical company, or even one that's written by a knowledgeable optician. Be curious. Never stop asking questions. Never stop learning. Do that, and then you'll be a great optician. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to helping Leanne. I asked Leanne to pack up a new frame, her monocular PDs, a few pictures, her most recent lens powers, and I'd see what we could do for her. Let's start with that frame she ended up in. Let's take a look at that choice. Even setting aside the high lens powers, this frame is much too wide for her face. Because it is so wide, we have a poor customer PD to frame PD match. Because of its size and shape, this frame will require excessive OC height movement. With powers like hers, you would want to do an OC height, and in this frame, that means movement of 5 millimeters or more, and that's not a good thing. The sharp corners or shape up and out is just asking for thickness issues in a high minus. All sorts of extra lens where you will never need it. And to me, that looks like cheek touch, which is never a good thing. And look, 174 is not some magic lens material that makes every power thin and cosmetically appealing. In fact, you're about to learn that we actually get better results with a 166 and 167. Well, sure enough, I went out to the mailbox and I had a package. Let's see what's inside. All right, looks like Leanne got her frames from iBobs. All right, let's take a look at this frame that she got. Oh, that is cute. Good shape, perfect for a prescription as high as hers. And let's look at those numbers. Let's see. All right, we've got a minus six, minus 75 at 135. Our left, oh my, yes, a minus 850, minus 25 at 15. We have a PD of 27.5, 29.5. Very good. All right, my next step here is to get this information, those numbers there, and the frame shape to the lab. So I'm going to do a little bit of writing. I'm going to trace this frame, take some measurements, send them off to the lab, and then I'm going to call to follow up and we're going to talk through why we choose certain materials and coatings and the importance of the size and the shape. And we're going to record that phone call. All right, I am going to head back into the office, scan this, send it off to Jan. So I will meet you when I'm making that phone call. All right, as I told you guys, I was going to give Janet a call in a couple of hours, and that time has arrived. I have her on the other end of the phone, and we are going to talk about how I would call in this job if I were a new optician uh, working with Laramie Kay. So, hello, Janet. Hey, John. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Did you get what I sent you so far? Yes, I did. So, if I'm going to walk you through as a new customer would, I would probably ask you to read the script to me in whatever order you want to. It's our job to kind of follow along with you and however you're comfortable with it. Okay. 
I have got a right I of minus 6, minus 75 at 135, and I've got a left of minus 850, minus 25 at 15. Okay. And the patient PD on that? I've got a monocular PD of 27.5, 29.5. Okay. And your frame size? I've got an A of 42, a B of 35, and a DBL of 18. That's nice. I like to congratulate people when they do a good job dispensing. So. She uh, kind of self-selected, actually. Uh, she knew from having a script this high for all her life that something was amiss with the one she just got, uh -huh. which is how she ended up contacting us. And uh, she tried some other stuff on, sent me some pictures. And I said, oh, that that's a good one. Okay. And it, it, you'll, you'll see in the end, I have some pictures. It does. It's, it looks good. And yeah, I, I couldn't be more happy. I would definitely go towards something like that if somebody came into my shop like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and the shape on it, I saw the tracing. So it's really well, almost a P3 type shape than a Xyle. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, when you say P3, where where would somebody find that term? Uh, yeah, I probably should say round. Are you, I probably should say round. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I was heading more towards. It's almost. Uh, it's almost round. Almost yeah, round. Okay. Almost round would probably be better. Yes. Have you talked to her about material or lens design? Because there's a couple of ways we could go. We could do right. it as a regular single vision. We could do it as a freeform. In our experience, over the last eight years of doing freeform, this is the type of prescription that would really benefit from a freeform single vision product. Yeah, that, that's definitely where we're headed with this. Yeah, definitely going to be the, the best of the best. Freeform. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. And have we discussed material at all? Um, she's currently in uh, competitors, free form, and a 174. That was kind of part of the issue. Um, the place she went just said, you know, oh, your power doesn't matter as long as we do you in 174, which is kind of the thing that set me off on this whole adventure, right. actually, out of all the things that were said, um, just blatantly assuming that, you know, everything would be okay in a 174. Right. Um, and I kind of had a hunch that you might not agree with that. So um, I'll let you run from there. Okay. So on this Honestly, with this prescription, and even if it were a little bit larger frame, I would honestly suggest 167. All right. It's a more stable product. The acuity with 167 is better. The AVI value with 167 is better. And we can actually surface 167 thinner than we can 174. <laughs> Re repeat that for us yes, one more time. I know. <laughs> we can surface a 167 thinner than we can surface a 174. Oh, I love that. Yeah. The reason for that is that with the 174 being a less stable product, that has to be thermal cure hard coated and going through the AR process, it is subject to heat. So because it's more heat sensitive, in the 167, I can go, I can surface it to 1.0 to a 1.2 center thickness and still go through that air process. With a 174, the minimum center thickness we can do going through that process is a 1.5. Gee, yeah, there we go. And it's just not, imagine when that comes out at the edges. Yeah, and Fantastic. it's not really a lot, but yeah. that is exactly <laughs> where you're going to notice it. So, yeah. If you put a 167 next to a 174 in the exact same power, I don't even think with calipers there would be a difference. No. Great. On the edge. Thing. All right. So, okay. That's well, that's what we'll do then. All right. You sold me on that. All right. So, did we talk about AR coatings? I think I'd like to do the clear ice, I think, okay. would be probably the best thing. Okay. Um, especially because the second part of this was that she was concerned about cosmetics. Okay. And, um, so, yeah, I think that would be a really yeah. interesting okay. one to do that. Yeah, the ice is going to make the lens actually disappear on her face. Yeah. So yep. there's actually no, re no residual color on that at all. All right. Forgot to put on my sheet an OC height, and I, we do oh, need yes. to talk about that. I forgot to ask you about that, too, because with that kind of yeah. power, um, yes. depending on how the frame fits, you do want to measure for right. that. I'm um, going to do an OC height of 22. Okay. Or, or 4.5 above the B. Okay. 
And I stole that from one of the pictures that she sent. So Okay. So we'll get that taken care of. Let me read it back and make sure that I've got everything correct. I've got a right lens of minus 6, minus 75 at 135. The left is a minus 850, minus a quarter at 15. It is mono PDs, 27 and a half over 29 and a half. The OC height is 22. We're going to do the single vision radical, which is our free form single vision in a 167. We're going to do the ICE AR, and the frame that it's going into is a 4218 with a 35B, and it's a fairly round shape. It's going to be an awesome pair of glasses. Hey. Nice. And this is how they turned out. I think they're absolutely beautiful. We ended up running these in a high index 166. This was in a single vision, our free form radical design, and it has a mild compensation. It has the ice clear AR coating. No need to polish. I mean, the choice of frame and the design of the lens, there's no edge showing at all. Personally, I think these look fantastic. Here is what Leanne thinks. These are my new glasses, and they are the thinnest glasses I've had in a long time. I love how there's virtually no facial inset on the sides, so it's not as obvious that it's such a strong prescription, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. Wow, okay, so much there. Uh, worth a few seconds to review the highlights. Highlight number one, frame size and frame shape always matter, always. Proper frame choice is the base for any good pair of eyeglasses. Two, 174 is not a magic lens material. Number three, you must develop enough confidence to reach a compromise with your higher power customers. For them, fashion be damned. Look, Leanne didn't wake up that morning minus 850, okay? High power people know they are a tough fit. Work that to your advantage. Number four, I sincerely hope you could hear the difference in the conversation that I had with Janet when I called the job in. That is the kind of relationship that we have with our customers at Laramie K. As we like to say, a great lens design all begins with great communication. Why not give us a call today?